Okay, perfect. We are in a small community today. I, see, I feel that the coffee break, I, lose, I lost some people, but small does, like, means the best of the best quality is here. I hope so. So my name is Daria Sanani, and I'm head of marketing at Shipio. And we are going to discuss today, um, and just a question, can I have the slides, please, on the, on the screen? I don't see them. I don't want to look back all the time. Technical issues. I have the timer, but I don't have the screen. OK, nevertheless, I'm going to try to do it without the back screen. Uh, so please mind, don't mind if I look a little bit back. So we are going to discuss why visibility is no longer enough and what is going to come next. And you're wondering why a marketing person is standing in front of you. And you're going to see that there are a lot of interesting parallels between what we experience as marketers in the last couple of years and what is happening today in supply chain. But before we dive into this topic, let me introduce you Shipio. Shipio is a global real-time transportation visibility platform. And we are tracking millions of loads for global customers, shippers, logistics service providers, and carriers. We aggregate data from over 100,000 carriers in road, sea, air, and rail freight. And the value we bring to customers can be summarized in threefold. First, we improve customer satisfaction. And this is us being B2C consumers, educated with the Amazon effect. We just want things to be on time. We know we want to have the notification that the driver is coming. I just got one notification from Amazon saying that like, my, my, the, um, the uh, birthday cards of my son are arriving. They are like costing me five bucks. But you guys in the B2B sector, you want to have the same type of visibility when you have five million euros in your truck or in your cargo. The second thing which we bring to customers is improving productivity. So be it your transportation teams. I mean, we have been working with customers. They were sending faxes, doing calls. Some Eastern European customers, they still need to send telegrams to have like a, a legal proof. So we improve the, um, the productivity of transportation teams, your warehouses teams, and your store teams. And the last thing, not least, ah, perfect. Thank you so much. The last but not least thing is improving bottom line, decreasing dwell time, decreasing expedite shipments, improving inventory. So our vision is to build fully automated and sustainable supply chain with you guys. And we have cutting edge technology, ETA, based on machine learning and AI. So I like to wake you up a little bit. I mean, we've been sitting around here so a question, we're in the visibility track. Hopefully everyone will raise their hand. Do you think you need visibility today? Ah, thank you people, thank you, okay. So it's interesting because there are quite some few people who raise their hand. Uh, you know I'm a marketing person. All of you are going to end up in the CRM as leads. Just saying, it's a joke, maybe not. Nevertheless, so. The interesting part is that visibility is a data journey. And some people are at the very beginning of the data journey. They might just need to know, where is my stuff? And you know what? A lot of companies are there. I've been talking to a father of my, at my kid's school. He is working for a big car manufacturer. And he's a finance director. He's even not a supply chain person. And he was telling me that, like, oh my gosh, we have so much headache. We are losing cars. Like, imagine they're losing cars. So when they're being transported by trucks, they end up not knowing where 20% of the cars are, 15% of cars are. They have, of course, like systems on board. And when this car gets activated, they realize those cars are actually somewhere in Africa being resold. I mean, can you imagine they're losing cars? And I've been hearing the same stories from customers losing cargo, losing trains. Come on, how can you lose a train? <laughs> but this happens. So maybe you are on the visibility journey where you just need to understand where is my stuff. And this is perfectly fine. People need to be at, uh, like at the first level as well. 
But I'm going to talk about what is coming next. What are the different use cases? What, how can you leverage real-time transportation visibility to run a much bigger game? By the way, in the previous uh, presentation that we had from uh, Mart, he was telling that 5% of his uh, supplies were getting lost in Afghanistan. I mean, bravo, <laughs> only 5% during war was lost. We see customers having much bigger losses. So, that being said, let's look what the results are of this question from the industry. So, based on Gartner's research, Actually, 79% of companies say that they consider supply chain visibility as the main driver of resilience. So much more than what we saw in this room. Just saying. So the big, and I mean this key word, we've heard it from different uh, speakers previously on the stage as well, resiliency. So let me show you something, an interesting uh, graph, which is the Global Supply Chain Pressure Index that has been developed by the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. And I'm not going to teach you anything uh, new. So the zero is kind of the perfect stage. Not really possible to, to reach it. You can see there's like uh, uh, fluctuations. In the last couple of years, there was a lot of pressure over the supply chain. We know all these disruptions, pandemic, war, etc. I've checked the numbers yesterday. I had to send the slides some weeks back. And now it has dropped. We are actually at a historical low. It has not been as low as like in the last 10 years. So we are back to the old days when there's like blank ceilings, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the first kind of key point. What is then, and actually what is, uh, like this was the, the blank swan events that, um, that Martin was uh, mentioning. The thing is, what this taught supply chain officer is that they have now a playbook. All of you must have a playbook. You know how to handle disruption. You know now how to be more resilient. Maybe not fully, but you have a playbook. And this is great news for the industry. So the mandate of supply chain officers what has shifted, not the job. The job is still to balance demand and supply. And we have seen that actually demand has been always volatile. I mean, for retailers, events like uh, uh, the Black Friday or Christmas sales. What pandemic has shown is the supply, chain, supply part can be also very volatile as well. And the mandate of supply chain officers shifted from having profitability being at its center to resilience being at the center. And we have heard this from, uh, our previous, um, from, our pre from the previous people on the stage, like David or Jamal talking about resilience, sustainability, etc. So the three key drivers are customer satisfaction. And I've talked about this just previously when I was telling you that, uh, that the Amazon effect. But if we put this in a more perspective, the inventory, the ratio of inventory to sales right now is at 1.2. I've checked this yesterday evening as well. I'm preparing my numbers. They were 10 years ago at 1.7. So we are going from, the, from, a, from a paradigm of just-in-case inventory to just-in-time. So you cannot afford things to be late. 69% of customers will not buy again if the delivery is not on time. So it's really like customer satisfaction is a very, very big driver. And we heard as well many of the speakers talking about how supply chain needs to be more customer centric. The second part is employee experience. And this is uh, really linked as well to the digitalization. I'm from the generation of the great resignation. I want to have work-life balance. I'm working as a marketing director or head of marketing, however you want to call me. I'm working from home. And I have all the tools at my fingertips. I can manage my team from Europe, and I have all information in real time. I do not need to have, I, when I start working, I was like having a computer that was fixed, and I had to come to office in order to, col to collaborate. Today, I have the digital tools. I have sexy tools. Why do I, as marketer, have sexy tools? Why do supply chain people cannot have sexy tools as well? 
and don't and cannot have the same employee experience. And we all know how difficult it is to attract talent and to retain talent. The third driver is sustainability. And we heard this word all over, all over again. So I've checked the numbers for Netherlands, and in 2023, 43% of people were, um, were saying that they want to buy more uh, sustainable products versus 28% 10 years ago. So I mean it has almost doubled. So it's not just, it's not just the regulations, it's also driven by consumers. And last thing, profitability. We are not going to dive into this because this is like uh, the first in the initial mandate that supply chain officer had. But all this needs to be linked to being able to bounce back whenever disruption happens, being much more agile, being much more resilient. So, this is what I was t telling you about, like the B2C experience and the number I was just mentioning, the 69% of consumers who are likely not to buy again if it's not deli delivered within the promised date. So now, if we go to the way supply chain works, let's look at how the time between planning, design, and execution has shrunk. And I'm going as well to give you an example of what we have seen in, this, uh, in the marketing um, world on this. So we, as a visibility provider, we are typically in the transportation execution part. So we collect GPS points. We collect around 6 billion GPS points a year. So that's massive data. With this data, so basically imagine whenever you see, like whenever you have a truck that is late, what are you going to do? Are you going to stand there, look at your watch, and say like, okay, am I going to give him five more minutes? Oh no, he's not there, oopsie doopsie. Uh, no, you want, in order to be resilient, you want to be able to anticipate. You want to be able actually to act upon it before it occurs. Because you cannot afford to wait. So things have shrunk from, in terms of visibility, from days to hours. So now you actually have uh, real-time pings. You know the GPS points of your carriers. Now, if a disruption is constantly occurring on, like, for example, a carrier being all the time late, or uh, you see, for example, that a carrier is being not sustainable or having too many emissions, because we do, for example, calculate as well scope-free emissions, actually something is wrong in your planning and may actually maybe something is wrong in your network design. And what we, can, we saw actually uh, through Zoe's presentation just before, now you can run uh, what-if scenarios on your design. We are integrated with all those different systems. The power of visibility today is to be able to redesign your supply chains on the go. And this is what happened in marketing uh, 15 to 20 years ago. So when I, was, uh, when I was a kid, I mean, have anyone watched Mad Men? Mad Men, Don Draper sits in the room, gets a client that comes in, okay, presents some interesting designs, then it's being sent, like, um, then it's being uh, shown, like, on billboards, and three months later, we see the results on sales, did it impact or not, and then, basically, uh, you readjust the strategy. In supply chain, it works to some extent like this as well. Today, me as the marketer, I adapt my campaigns on an hourly basis. I send my email, I see an A-B test, did it work out or not? I ask my team to replan actually my next emailings because the campaign failed or not, and I automate some of my processes. And this is what is happening in supply chain. I hope me as a marketer, I can give you some tips um, on, uh, on the uh, future of supply chain. So this is really uh, a revolution that is coming up. And basically, it's a learning system. The learning system is based on the system of information where you collect high-quality data from different modes of transportation, but this is not enough. It's not enough just to collect this data. What is really interesting is to act upon this. And how do you act upon this? You act upon this by creating workflows, 
by having notifications, by having personalized experience, and this feeds into back into your multimodal system of information. This is what we see as the future, where it's going to be a loop. So artificial intelligence might come in, but what we believe is that there's always going to be a human interaction. Some things are going to be automated, of course, and this is going to be this feedback loop where things are going to be, uh, like little actions are going to be uh, done automatically. But this is a self-learning system. And if you look at the technological evolution, I mean, when I was a kid, ERPs were like super hype and super sexy at that time. But then came the TMS systems. Afterwards came transportation visibility uh, providers like us. What helped to, uh, us to emerge were the fact that we have now APIs and that we can connect to plenty of other systems and we are connected to many carriers, to many partner systems. The next disruption is that we go from a system of information to a system of engagement, where you automate processes based on real-time data. And this is, has a lot of power. And you know what? You think I'm maybe like really looking too much forward. I just need to know where is my stuff. I just need to have a GPS point. No companies can achieve that. Actually, it's happening now. Yes, it's happening now. So we have been working with Renault to build this digital control tower. And what, is, what I, I did not mention before is that basically what we are seeing today is that the control tower and the digital twin are merging, fueled by real-time transportation visibility. And this is what Renault has done. There are less than 10 of those control towers in the world. It's extremely disruptive. So what they have done with us is that we are, uh, they, have, they are using Google's digital twin and they're pulling in information from their suppliers, from the inventory. Uh, Google is providing them with some AI tools on weather forecasts, etc. And we provide them with real-time transportation visibility. They know now exactly where is this stuff. They now know exactly where disruption is happening. And the beauty of it is that they are, can act upon this. So they have already workflows in place where they automate relationship with carriers. They are sending a notification automatically saying like, you need to accelerate, you need to, you need to be on time here on, and so on. This is happening already today. So when we are talking about what visibility brings and what is coming next, it's already, the future is already here actually. So, I do have a video about this, but I'm not going to play it right now. It's going to take you, I am going to send this to you via email and then measure your engagement in order to optimize my campaigns. But the question is, where do you stand today on your visibility journey? Are you on stage one? Do you just need to know where is your stuff? Are you on stage two, where you already have some level of visibility and you can already automate some? Or are you on stage three, where you are really in the future of a supply chain visibility, merging digital control tower with the digital twin? Thank you so much, and I hope you enjoyed my talk. Please meet us at the booth to discuss further. Thank you, Daria. Thank you.